This is our presentation on romantic and intimate relationships. Our group members are Heather, Molly, Grace, and Warren. Active student response number one. What is something you already know about romantic and intimate relationships? What is a relationship? They're when two or more people engage in a homosexual, heterosexual, polyamorous, or pansexual relationship. These can occur in the microsystem as you are directly impacted by your romantic partner. This also occurs while adolescents develop. They may interact with some of their peers and develop romantic interests. It can vary in romantic, emotional, and sexual attraction. Romantic attraction. An affinity for someone that evokes the want to engage in romantic, intimate behavior experienced in varying degrees. For example, flirting, dating, and marriage. Emotional and spiritual attraction. An affinity for someone that evokes the want to engage in emotional, intimate behavior. Examples are sharing, confiding, trusting, and being interdependent with one another. Sexual attraction. An affinity for someone that evokes the want to engage in physical, intimate behavior. Examples include kissing, touching, and participating in intercourse. Importantly, sexual attraction behavior, and identity are not as closely related to one another as traditionally thought. Why do we love? Many people have theorized why we feel attraction and choose certain people to be intimate with. Here are a few of those theories. Plato says that love makes us whole again. He said that humans were once creatures with two sets of limbs, and that one day they angered the gods. So Zeus split them in two, and we've been searching for our other half ever since. Schopenhauer said, love tricks us into procreating. He said, love is based in sexual desire. He thought that we love only because our desires lead us to believe another person will make us happy, but that this was just an illusion. He stated that our children concrete the illusion of love that we create. A British philosopher named Bertrand Russell said that love's an escape from loneliness. We love to satisfy our physical and psychological desires. He believes that we are biologically designed to procreate. But without passion, relationships and sex are unsatisfying. He thinks that love is able to help us overcome our fear of the world and escape our lonely shells. French philosopher Beauvoir said that love lets us reach beyond ourselves. Love is the desire to integrate with others and infuses our lives with meaning. She said that we can fall into a trap when we have unattainable expectations of, quote, traditional relationships, which was pretty ahead of her time. We shouldn't assume that relationships are needed, but they can be important to developing supportive behavior and healthy relationships can even lead to discovering ourselves. The impact of romantic relationships. They can be important in developing supportive behavior, they can be rewarding to each partner, and they can foster an understanding of how to treat people. The ratings of support from family versus those of peers and partners change during an adolescent's life. Psychologist Wendell Furman states that Adolescence seeking support decreases while the frequency of negative interactions between family increases. 
In contrast, ratings of support from friends and romantic partners increase. In elementary school, parents are perceived as the most supportive. In junior high, friends and parents are comparable. But in high school, friends overtake the most supportive, followed by romantic partners. He said, quote, adolescents commonly report that romantic partners provide support, companionship, and intimacy. Healthy relationships involve communication, trust, and respect. I don't know how they can. You said you were going to be home at 10 last night. What happened? Um, you know, I was at my mom's house, I guess I don't know me. Doing what? Uh, something else in construction, she's sitting at her house. Oh, what construction? She's taking down the wall, so we can make our closet bigger. Uh, you never texted me. I'm sorry, my phone died. I was worried, you were late. I know, I should like, check her phone and, like, text you, but I just, like, didn't think about it. Next time, just, like, try to let me know before your phone dies. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. In the video, Heather and Peter were interacting. Unhealthy relationships. Signs of an unhealthy relationship may be manipulation, physical or emotional abuse, and mistrust. Where were you last night? I was at my mom's house. Um, okay. Why didn't you let me know? Because my phone died. I didn't have a charger or anything. Well, I don't believe you. Probably you're out partying or something. <laughs> I wasn't. I was just at my mom's house. I don't know how to prove it to you. Who's that? Um, it's my dad. This is not your dad. You're cheating on me, aren't you? I am not cheating on you. Well, maybe I am. I can't deal with you anymore. Unhealthy relationships can have a negative impact on development. Abusive parents could contribute to depression. Abusive partners could contribute to depression, anxiety, paranoia, or PTSD. Unhealthy relationships are hard to always recognize, but if you or someone else is in an abusive or unhealthy relationship, you can visit loveisrespect.com or call the number on the slide to find out how you can take steps towards leaving that relationship. This is your active student response number two. What do you think are some other characteristics of the healthy slash unhealthy relationship? Please list two for each. And this is your active student response number three. What is one thing you learned from this lecture? Thanks for watching. You can laugh now. Once we get done talking.